It has been nearly a week since President Biden ended his campaign for re-election and the race for the White House has taken a dramatic turn. Vice President Kamala Harris is now the presumptive Democratic nominee and is gaining momentum. Former President Trump, meantime, is stepping up his attacks against Harris and the race begins to tighten. There are just over 100 days until the election and the polls are changing. Former President Trump is still holding on to the lead in some battleground states, but that lead is shrinking and Harris must still choose a running mate with a Democratic convention just three weeks away. Mary Beth McDade is here in studio now with the latest on the race for the White House. Mary Beth. Mike and Chair, as the race for the White House continues, Kamala Harris closes the gap between her and Trump. The two are neck and neck in some battleground states and many political experts now believe that the independent vote could very well decide the 2024 election. So now we have a new candidate to defeat the most incompetent, unpopular, and far-left vice president in American history. Former President Donald Trump attacked Vice President Kamala Harris at the Believers Summit in West Palm Beach. She was a bum three weeks ago. She was a bum. A failed vice president and a failed administration with millions of people crossing, and she was the border czar. Trump told the conservative religious group that he has recovered well following the assassination attempt and just took the last bandage off his ear. I stand before you tonight thanks to the power of prayer and the grace of Almighty God. Trump vowed to hold another rally in Pennsylvania and will honor firefighter Corey Compatore, who was killed in the July 13th attack. The greatest dinner I've ever had. Earlier in the day, Trump welcomed Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to Mar-a-Lago, urging him to end the war in Gaza and work for a release of hostages being held by Hamas. Kamala. Hi. Meantime, Harris had a big day. She got a very important phone call from the Obamas. The Democratic heavyweights have now officially endorsed her. We called to say Michelle and I couldn't be prouder to endorse you and to do everything we can to get you through this election and, and into the Oval Office. Oh my goodness. Michelle Brock, this means so much to me. The endorsement comes a day after a record-breaking Zoom call, mobilizing white women to support Harris. The call follows a virtual call earlier in the week to mobilize black women voters. The calls raise millions of dollars for Harris's campaign. Among the 164,000 callers on Thursday were professional athletes and celebrities. It's not about which candidate is perfect. It's which candidate is human and wants to keep us all human. Meantime, J.D. Vance tried to explain on the Megyn Kelly show what he meant during a 2021 Fox interview when he called women who haven't given birth childless cat ladies. He told Kelly he was being sarcastic. That this is not about criticizing people who for various reasons didn't have kids. This is about criticizing the Democratic Party for becoming anti-family and anti-child. And Harris is expected to announce her running mate by August 7th. That's going to do it for me. Micah, over to you. Thank you, Mary Beth.